We're now going to continue our coverage of iterator adapters by focusing on the third type of iterator adapter, which are so-called stream adapters. And rather than using various loops or other mechanisms to extract and insert data explicitly from IO streams or file streams, instead we can use stream adapters to make the streams appear as if they're STL containers. And this will allow mutating algorithms like copy to manage the process of actually building the container, which in our example down below will ultimately be sorted as well. There are three types of stream adapters, iStream adapters, OStream adapters, and stream buffers. So here's an example that uses both iStream and OStream adapters. And this is a variation on the theme of what we've seen before. In this case, we're gonna have a list of strings and we're going to read from the standard input a bunch of strings. And this will use the copy algorithm. And so we're gonna use the iStream iterator adapter to read the contents of the standard input and treat every element in there as a string. And we're gonna keep reading until we reach the end of the input. And every time along the way, we're gonna go ahead and insert the next string into our list. And we're going to put the next string at the end. So this is using the inserter insert adapter or inserter adapter that we talked about before. And we're gonna use this in order to be able to basically append the contents of the input, which are strings at the end of this list. So we'll take a look at this. I'll run the program for you and then I'll kind of dive down and explore how everything works underneath the hood. After we've got ourselves the list of strings into the list called my list, we then go ahead and sort the list by using the sort method defined on list which under the hood uses a merge sort algorithm to sort the lists. And then we go ahead and we print the contents of the list to the standard output. So let's run the program and see what it does. So it's gonna prompt us or not really prompt us, it's gonna wait for us to give it some input. So let's say now is the time for all good people to come to the aid of their party. That's what we give as input. We then give it the end of file character. You can see it read everything in, it sorted it, and then it wrote it out. And this illustrates, as we'll see here, both iStream iterator adapters, as well as OStream iterator adapters. So let's go back to the program and poke around a little bit more to see how everything's working under the hood. So let's first go ahead and take a look at the iStream iterator. And uh, sometimes these things can be a little bit hard to find. So here's the iStream iterator. Whoops, that's not the iStream iterator. That is not it at all. So here's the iStream iterator. As you can see, it's a template class that's parameterized by various types, including the type that we're reading from the input, such as a string or an int and so on. And the iStream iterator is an iterator that has an input iterator tag and then some other fields that are provided here to indicate information about this particular type. Now, you can also see that we have some traits defined here. We're not going to talk about them a whole lot at the moment. What I mainly want to focus on here are the various uh, constructors and so on that are part of this class. So let's go ahead and search down a little bit farther, and let's go ahead and find the implementation of these constructors. So here's the iStream iterator and the constructor that we've got. And you can see here that the particular constructor that we're using in this program is taking the CN iStream as input. So if you go down here, you'll see that we've got that constructor. That's the one that's right here. Let me uh, go ahead and get rid of this for a second because it's highlighting is annoying. So you can see that we have the iStream iterator here. And what that does under the hood is that takes the I stream that's passed to it, in our case, CN. And it goes ahead and it stashes it away in this data member called in stream. So we're basically storing the I stream in an in stream. <laughs> and then you can see the very first thing that happens is we go ahead and read some data from the input stream into the value. So the value, of course, is whatever type we've got. In our case, it's string, but it could be int or double or employee record or whatever it is we're, we're trying to adapt this, this I stream to be able to read into in a, in a typed way. So let's assume for sake of argument, it's able to read things in. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you think about how this is actually going to be used inside the copy algorithm itself, 
of course, we're going to dereference the input iterator, which in this case is the iStream adapter. And that should be able to return the item that we want to be stored in the output iterator, which in this case is the inserter inserter adapter. So let's go back over here and see what some of the operations do. So you can see here, uh, what we really want to find is going to be the operation for reading. And that, of course, will be this operation, which is operation star. So that's the dereference operation. So that's what's going to be called internally to copy when we want to read the contents from the, from the input stream. And as you can see, what it does is it just returns the value that was set up here in the constructor. So the constructor has to do one read to kind of get all the, the wheels turning in motion. Then you'll see there's a plus plus operation. And of course, that's something else that the copy algorithm likes to do. Copy algorithm also likes to increment by one. And you can see what happens when an increment is done on the stream. We go ahead and we try again to read something from the input stream that we've tucked away in our data member. And if we're successful, we read that into the value and then we keep going. If we're not successful, we'll set a failure flag and, and basically not do anything and, and the stream will, will stop. And so this whole thing will continue until we reach the end of the stream, in which case you can see in streams becomes equal to zero, which is an indication that we've reached the end. You can also see that this other constructor here sets in stream equals to zero. And that's, of course, the constructor that's used here to indicate, whoops, to indicate we've reached the end of the stream. And again, this is really not used for anything in our implementation. It's just there to make everything hold together with respect to the parameters that the copy algorithm is expecting to receive for its first and last input iterator. Let's see if there's anything else interesting to talk about with respect to the iStream adapter. I think the main things to see are the uh, operations here that do plus plus and star. And oh yes, also the ones that do uh, equality and inequality. So you can see here, what they do is the not equal operator is what's used to determine when we've reached the end. And it'll just go ahead and do some comparisons under the hood in order to, uh, to see if we've reached the end of the stream. And as you can see here, the way that works is we check to see if the value of in stream for the left-hand side of equality is equal to the right-hand side. And that will only occur when we've reached the end of the input and therefore in stream is set to null and we compare that against this other iStream iterator object. It's the last part of the range, and that is set to zero or set to null. And so in that case, if they're both equal to the same value to the null, then we know that we're done. And that's how we use this special little trick here to make sure that we can end ourselves in the appropriate way when we reach the end of the input. Okay, so that's basically looking at the iStream iterator adapter. And I think you'll agree it's, it's pretty daggone cool because it allows us to treat things that are not iterators or not even STL containers, like the standard input object CN, as if it was an iterator. And if you think about it, that's really at the heart of what an adapter is about. It makes things work together that weren't designed to work together. So let's come down here then and take a look at the other end of the spectrum at the, the output iterator adapter. So in this case, we're going to copy the contents of the list that we just sorted, and we want to write it to standard output, and we want to put a new line between every element here. Now, we don't have to do that. We could change it to a space or a dash or something, but in this case, I'm using new line because they're basically strings, and it's easier to read it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an output iterator, which is going to be an O stream iterator adapter. So it's basically going to encapsulate C out in a form that will write the contents of the input iterator, which is the range of the list, to the standard output. So let's go ahead and take a look at OStream iterator. And uh, if you take a look down here, you can see that we have OStream iterator. So there's OStream iterator. It's also an iterator. It's an output iterator. You can see that. And you can also see that its other parameters are left undefined. We don't need them in this case. So if you take a look down here, the OStream iterator adapter stores an OStream pointer and a delimiter. And we pass both of those things in as the constructor as C out and the new line character. 
So down here, you can see here's the constructor that we're using that's going to initialize this O stream iterator adapter. And it takes in the O stream, C out in our case, and it stashes its pointer into the data member that's defined here to hold that. Uh, we're actually not using that version, we're using this version, which gives it a const care star string, which will be the delimiter to put between each of the operations when we do the output. So that's the actual constructor that we use here. Now, if you recall your output iterator semantics for the copy algorithm, the main important thing there is the assignment operator. That's what's going to be used to get the contents from the right-hand side, which is the input iterator that we're currently on, and then copy it into the output, into the output iterator. And in this case, here's the assignment operator for the output iterator adapter. And what it does is it takes the value that's passed to it, which as you can see here, will be each element, each string in our list from beginning to end. And it goes ahead and it takes that value and it writes it to the output stream using the appropriate insertion operation. So it inserts it into the output stream. And then if there is a delimiter, in other words, if we used this constructor that's passed the delimiter, then it goes ahead and it writes the delimiter out to the output stream as well. And when it's all done, it just returns a, a reference to the object for which it was invoked. So that's the main workhorse method in OStream iterator. Now, if you take a look at the other methods like the reference and plus plus and so on, you can see that they're purely no ops. They, they serve no other purpose except to allow the code for the copy algorithm to compile. Because if it didn't have those methods defined, of course, it couldn't compile because it wouldn't match the signatures that the copy algorithm expects to see. And this, again, is really the, the wonderful aspect of STL that's so clever is using these adapters to make things work together and to make them work syntactically, even though they weren't really designed to work together in the first place at all. So I think that's just the, the cat's meow, as it were. OK, so that's the second example that I want to show you here. This shows the use of uh, input adapter. Actually, this is the first example for the, uh, the iterator adapters dealing with stream adapters. So now let's go over and take a look at another example. So that was example uh, 65A, I believe. So let's go look at 65B. So we're going to go and do a little bit deeper dive into the concept of an iStream iterator and kind of look at how it works. And we're going to break it down a little bit and not surround it with the copy mechanism quite as overtly and, and kind of get a better feel for what it's doing. And so basically what it's going to do, as we see here, is it's going to read through more overtly. And what we're going to do is, is kind of show you the underlying pieces. So we have ourselves a vector. And we're going to define a type def for iStream iterator. And we're going to give this the vector's value type. And we're going to call this is iter for input stream iter. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make ourselves a type we call os iter for output stream iterator. And you can see that that's going to take the value type of the, of the uh, vector. And uh, notice how we did a type def for vector of int to vector. So we can be a little bit more, uh, use a little bit more shorthand notation here and not have to type everything out to be quite as long. We could do some other funky things with uh, decal type and so on if we wanted to, but I'm keeping it easier for now. Now we go ahead and define ourselves an instance of vector, which starts out being empty. Remember, that's a vector of int because we typed up it. And now we're going to get a prompt that says, please enter a sequence of integers and then hit the end of file character to quit. And you can see down here, we do the same trick with copy. We make an instance of is iter, which is our iStream iterator adapter. And we make an anonymous instance of is iter that has no parameters. So the first one takes in cn and the second thing is cn and the second object has nothing. So that, of course, will default to the null pointer internally. And that's how it'll know when it's done. The equality operation will check to see if the pointers are equal. And they're only equal when they're both null. And then in this case, we're going to put the items at the end of vector v. So after we do that, then we're going to have a little fun here using a slight variation on this, demonstrating again the, the random access nature of vectors. And you're going to see that we're going to write the contents from the beginning of the vector to 
the end minus one. So we don't quite go all the way to the very end. We leave one element left, and you'll see why we do that in a second. And every step along the way, we're going to use our output iterator object, OS iter, to do the same trick we did before, except now, instead of writing a new line as a delimiter, we're going to give space plus space. And you'll see why we use that particular character sequence in a second when I run the program for you. The final thing we do is we go ahead and we define ourselves a value type of our vector, which in this case is going to be int, as you can see. Uh, we could probably also use auto here as well. And then we're going to say, is the vector empty? Well, the vector shouldn't be empty because we hopefully put stuff into it. But assuming that the vector is uh, not empty, we go ahead and take a snapshot of the last element in the vector. And we get that by saying v dot back. So back will always give you the last element without removing it. And then we're going to go ahead and say, please accumulate from the beginning of the vector to the end of the vector and write out the total sum. So accumulate is actually a numeric algorithm in STL. And we'll take a look at it in a second. And it's going to go ahead and sum up all the contents between beginning and end. So let's go see if we can find accumulate. Here is accumulate. You can see accumulate takes an input iterator to the beginning of the range, an input iterator to the one past the end of the range. And it takes a, a functor, which is basically a function. And uh, no, I take it back. It's a value, not, not a function. It's a value. And we go through the range from beginning to last. And every step along the way, we take a knit. And we then add the current value in the range to a knit and then update a knit. So this is basically doing you know, init plus equals star first. And then when we're all done, we return a knit. I'm not quite sure why they don't use uh, plus equal here. There, there's probably a reason for it. But um, basically, this is going to go through and sum everything up. So when we're all done, we're going to get the accumulated value. We're going to run it. It prompts us for a sequence of integers. So let's go ahead and type in a very simple sequence of integers. And then we hit Control D or Command D on my Mac. And then that tells us 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50 equals 150. And now you can see why I used the delimiter that I did. I used the plus sign in order to make sure that things were going to work uh, from beginning to end. So that's another example. This is kind of breaking down the input and output iterators a little bit more fine-grained way and seeing some other perhaps more interesting ways that you can use them that were not shown when we just do a blind copy from beginning to end. Now we're going to go even deeper into this, and we're going to take a look at some of the uses of OStream iterator adapters in order to be able to intentionally insert elements at various locations in a container. And this is going to clearly demonstrate the difference between using iterator adapters, which have insert properties, versus doing things that will um, overwrite the contents. And so in this particular case, we're, we're showing off the fact that we can define an explicit OStream iterator, which I call OI for OStream iterator. And I can give it C out, and I can give it a space. And then I'm going to go ahead and feed it values to write. So I'm going to say, please write the value 6 to the standard output. Please write the value 88 to the standard output. And then I print a new line. And then what I do is I go ahead and create a new container, which in this case will be a deck just to do something different. And now I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning of the deck. And while I haven't reached deck minus 1, I print the contents of the deck. And then I go ahead and I sum everything together. So this is kind of what I did before, except now I'm using a deck as opposed to using a vector. And uh, I'm using auto here just for kicks. So let's go ahead and run this program, and we'll see what it does. And you can see it prints out 6 and 88 to the output, because that's what it's been told to do. And that's the way that the, the OStream iterator works. It inserts it and basically puts it in the output. It doesn't overwrite anything. And then it goes ahead and it says 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 equals 22, which is in fact correct. Now, one thing I want to note here is that the star and the plus sign are purely syntactic sugar. This is the same as when we were talking about the back insert iterator adapter and the front insert iterator adapter and so on, where those things are just there to make algorithms like copy work consistently. 
But if we don't have copy, we don't have to give the pretense that we're actually trying to uh, mimic that syntax. So notice I've changed the syntax now. Don't get a compile error, rerun the code, and voila, I get exactly the same results. So that's just underscoring the fact that in this case, the plus plus and the star are no ops. And I think you probably remember that, hopefully from before, if you take a look at the OStream iterator and you take a look down at its operator dereference and its plus plus, you can see that they don't do anything. They're just returning the object by, by reference. So that's an indication of, of how no oppy they are. They don't really do anything. We don't even need to have them there. But copy requires them. And I put them here just because it looks cool to show it like that, but it's not strictly necessary. Okay, let's continue on. And let's go ahead and look at the fourth example in this discussion. So this example is going to be different. Before, we've been focusing on input iterator adapters that were iStream adapters and OStream adapters. And now we're going to look at something that actually is adapting streams, or more specifically, file streams or file buffs. So these are really quite interesting, and they allow you to be able to treat files in a context that allows them to be worked upon as if files themselves and the content of files were actually STL objects that could be iterated over. And that's really wacky and pretty cool. So we're going to see that there's a template called iStream buff iterator, and we're going to be able to use that to read the contents of a file and do something with it. So let's take a look and see how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to make ourselves a temporary file. And uh, I'm using a very um, a method that is very contentious called temp name. Don't use temp name in your own code. Uh, it's just here because it's easy to show the example. So I'm creating a temporary file name. I don't care what the name is. I just need to place the stash data. And once I've got a temporary file name and it works, I go ahead and I create an OF stream. So that's basically an output file stream as opposed to an O stream, which is for not necessarily for files, it's for things that come from standard input and standard output and so on. So in this case, we're having an output file stream with that name of that file and we open it for basically reading and writing and we truncate it so it has no contents to begin with. And then we go ahead and we take that output file stream and we write a string to it. So we say, here's a sample sentence for output. I hope you like this sentence out there, which is um, not necessarily very coherent, but it gets the point across. So we've written that to the file. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, go to that file, and we're going to say, hey, file, reset the file pointer back to the beginning of the file. Because after we write that contents to the file, the file pointer points to one past the end of that contents, anticipating the next write. But we're going to seek back to the beginning of the file. And then we're going to do some really cool magic. And there's two ways we're going to show this. The first way we're going to show it is by having an iStream buff iterator object explicitly defined. And we call it iter. And we give it the output streams read buffer. So rd buffer or rd buff is actually a pointer to the read buffer of that file. So now we have a pointer to the file contents itself because we seeked back to the beginning. And we're going to put that in the iStream buff iterator object. And we're going to parameterize it with character. So this is going to be basically an iStream iterator for character. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an end object, which is just the, the no op version of iStream buff iterator that takes no parameters. And then we're going to say, while the iterator is not equal to the end, and I probably should have called this like begin or first or last or something like that. It's probably a better name. Let's go ahead and, and change that so it's more coherent. Let's go ahead and change this to be uh, something that's more consistent with the terminology that we've used. So let's say, whoops. Let's go ahead and see if I can get that to. Um, rename. Well, it's being ornery, so I'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Let's call this first, and let's call this last, and then we'll say, while well, first is not equal to last, then we can go ahead and say first, and you can see we say 
star first plus plus. And so what that would do is that would write all the contents of the file out to the standard output. Or sorry, out to out to yeah, out to the standard output because we're using C out here. So that's one way to do things. However, no self-respecting STL programmer would ever deign to write code like this. Instead, they would do the much more concise form that is shown here using the copy algorithm and using anonymous objects of iStream buff iterator. So here we do the same thing we did up here, except now we're going to make an anonymous object of iStream buff iterator parameterized by character. And we give that the read buffer to the file. And then we're going to go until we reach the end. And every step along the way, we're going to go ahead and write the contents to standard output. And then when we're all done, we print a new line and we remove the file. So let's go ahead and run this code and see what it gives us. And what it gives us is it says it's writing to standard output now instead of writing to a file. Here's the sample sentence for output. I hope you like this sentence out there. So that's demonstrating how we were able to write it to a file, grab the read buffer from the file, shove that into an iStream buff iterator adapter, and then be able to copy the contents from that file to the standard output. And that's pretty crazy. And if you look at the iStream buff adapter, let's see if we can find that iStream buff iterator. And as usual, it takes a few little hops here to find what we're looking for because the uh, C lion gets a bit confused at times. So here's the iStream buff iterator. And uh, it's got a bunch of other stuff under the hood to do its dirty work. But you can see here that basically this is the constructor that we used where we're passing it a stream buff type. And it's going to store that and stash it under the hood. And again, you can see things like operator plus plus will increment stuff appropriately and, and so on and so forth. So that's basically showing the last example of stream iterator adapters or stream adapters which can take files or file streams, output files, input files, and so on, and adapt them to work with STL algorithms. So very cool capabilities, very powerful, and hopefully this will be useful in the kinds of work that you're doing as well.